Ah. Mmm. New cherry vanilla Coca-Cola. Mm. Could you tell I was really drinking it? Just like the movies, folks. Hello! And welcome to another fun size episode of A Crep from the 80s. Uh, today I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a variety of things, but from the same company. One company put all these weird ass things out. And that company is Mattel. Primarily you're gonna know Mattel from the He-Man Masters of the Universe line and you know, even though we did an episode uh with with a young Ben Scrivens um, there probably will be another He-Man episode. Uh, probably several. Certainly near the end of the summer. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, but I want to talk about some of the lines that I enjoyed as a kid that were short-lived from Mattel, and maybe some of you have never heard of them. But I certainly did, and I, and I liked them. And they were weird offshoots, oddities from the 80s. Um... And that's, you know, that's one thing that, one of the many things that I love about the 1980s is that sort of anything went, you know, they had that anything goes attitude, just threw shit at the wall and it was like, why not? Let's do it. Uh, and there's a lot of that, just weird stuff coming out of that amazing decade. And these are three properties from Mattel that uh, were part of that. First things first, from 1986, uh, the Mad Scientist line. So... This was basically a, this was a line of stuff that was basically um, in the tradition of creepy crawlies, creepy crawlers. That stuff had been around uh, since the 60s, 70s, um, where you just sort of, you make your own disgusting stuff. And the Mad Scientist line was, uh, which was also prevalent in the 80s, was slime. It was a slime thing. Uh, so you'd get all these kits, these these mad scientist kits, um, and you'd make goop or you'd, you'd have slime with them, and they would have uh, creatures or just gross stuff for you to implement to, you know, inject in with the slime or the stuff you were making, and then you could, like, press things and the slime would ooze out of the eyes or the stomach or things like that, like... One of the really cool creatures from 1986 from this line, which I did have, and I would like again, um, was this really globby, evil-looking dude, but his chest opened up, and, you, and his, he had bits and pieces in there, um, and they would get mixed up with the slime, and they would just kind of ooze out of his, his chest. Um, but, I mean, the 80s, it was overflowing with gross toys for boys, basically. Girls played with them as well, but it was always like the boys' toys, the gross stuff, garbage pail kids and, you know, boogers and every anything gross and weird. They definitely, you know, targeted uh, me, and we bought it, you know. We, we totally went along with it. Um, but, yeah, the Mad Scientist kits were really cool, um, and it's, uh, you know, they try to... I don't think there's any sort of... Um, big brand nowadays that's doing this stuff. There's offshoot brands. There's, you know, more uh, low budget or generic brands that are still doing the gross stuff, which is cool. Um, but I wouldn't mind seeing the Mad Scientist line come back. It's very cool. So um, then we will do again. This kind of goes along with the gross boys toys, um, but was also it appealed to somebody like me who loved the Muppets, loved Jim Henson, loved Dark Crystal and Labyrinth and storytellers, anything that like Jim Henson was doing. Um, this line of toys from Mattel was tailor-made for somebody like me. Also monsters and everything. People, uh, I love critters, I love gremlins, you know, ghoulies, any of that stuff. So this was the, the Boglins line of gross, creepy, ugly puppets, right? Uh, now, Boglins uh, was created by Tim Clark, and Tim Clark was actually a Jim Henson puppeteer, Muppeteer. Uh, he worked on the Muppets, he worked on the Dark Crystal, he worked on so many things. Uh, but he created the Boglins for Mattel. 
And he created the Sectars for Coleco, which we will talk about in its own episode. Um, but so yeah, the Boglins hit the scene in 1987. I was 10 years old. It was perfect. Perfect timing. Um, let's see, you, you open up the cage, or the cage. And, uh, there were these ugly ass... Look at this. All latex, squishy puppets. And you can move the eyes and everything. <laughs> They're just so sweet. Um, and I had two of them. I had this one, this guy right here, who is Vlob. But I also had the tan one, Dwork, <laughs> was his name. So I had the two of them. And there was a Boglin that came out that there was two of them. But one of them... I wanted so bad, and my family was like, you've already got two of those goddamn gross things, you don't need another one, blah, 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 blah. stop jumping on the Devon board. But, um, so they made two Halloween-centric Boglins, which were awesome. One was like a skeleton color, and the other was a pumpkin. It was a pumpkin Boglin, and it was orange and black and had the pumpkin like it was just so dope and a special cage uh and i want the halloween boggling and they're so expensive on the collector's market which sucks uh, but one day that's a holy grail for me for sure um and pretty much that was it i didn't go uh, you know i had my two boglins and i wanted the halloween one but i didn't go past that and i honestly didn't even sort of know that they were continuing to make different style boglins i didn't know they were little boglins and and you know they just made some different weird looking boglins the, the boglins in the uk were also very odd looking they didn't look like this i prefer this style boglin um i consider it the original um but yeah man boglins there's uh, things that are out there now for kids that are kind of like this. You can find them in Target and stuff like that, but but not the Boglins. Um, and actually, Tim Clark on his website is still making uh, new Boglins that you could only get through Tim Clark. Uh, not the cage, unfortunately, but they get them. You can get them in like a net. They come in a net. Um, and he makes very odd, different kind of Boglins. Unfortunately, not with the eye mechanism stuff, which would be amazing. Uh, but he's still doing, like, exclusive Tim Clark Boglins. Uh, but yeah, Boglins. I think it's awesome. The commercial is iconic. Uh, I think, generally, I think kids remember the Boglins. You know? Maybe not, but I don't know. I loved him. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is from 1988. And, <laughs> and this line, uh, this line was like there and gone. Very silly, but again, completely 80s um, from Mattel. Uh, they're called the Food Fighters. So <laughs> they were food that fought. Um, and there were only 10 figures. I have four of them that I have managed to recollect, but I had all of them. Um, these are some of the food fighters. I mean, and that's really just what it was. It was food, anthropomorphic food <laughs> that would fight. Uh, there was, you know, a good guy side and a bad guy side. Um, the Burger Deer General was the leader of the good guys, and they had um, accoutrements. They had some vehicles. Not many, but this was the big one. This was the... Uh, it's a... Look. It's an egg carton, folks. <laughs> Get it? Um, but they had, like, a helicopter... All the all the vehicles and stuff were basically like uh, things that you would find in the kitchen. 
Uh, so there'd be frying, like a helicopter, like he- the the uh, landing gear of the helicopter was hot dogs. Um, <laughs> there was like a frying s- skillet type thing for where you sat the characters. And the only thing that's missing from this guy is the uh, the ketchup, uh, round ketchup thing that you could launch out of the... And, I don't know, I believe I've talked about this. I mean, this goes for, you know, 100 bucks on, on eBay, but I found this for 50 cents at a thrift thrift store, basically. And I lost my mind, and because this was a grail for me that I wanted, but I wasn't going to spend $100 on it. Um, so I didn't. I spent 50 cents on it. That's great. Um, but unfortunately, luckily these guys I only got for five bucks each, which is great. You can't find that on eBay. They're going to charge you 30 to $40 loose and then 100 and up carded, uh, which is a cry and shame. But it's because, you know, Food Fighters, they it was very short-lived. Um, but relatively, I mean, you get those 10 figures... I'm, you know, I'm almost there. Look at this. I just need to track down the other six. And I got them all. And I did have them all. Um, but the, yeah, that was, you know, the Food Fighters. It's very interesting uh, that it didn't sort of take off. <laughs> when so many things took off back then that were just as weird. Um, but I guess food that fought just wasn't a wasn't a thing uh, that could sustain, say, a cartoon, uh, you know, other merchandising and things like that. Um, I mean, I believe there was, like, puzzles and coloring books and things like that, but there wasn't, like, a, a huge blast of merchandising and franchise, you know, uh, a franchise future for this line. But um, nowadays, in the modern era... Um, they have the, um, the grocery gang, uh, which are very similar and actually it was a line of toys that my son was really into. And I was able to sort of be like, oh, these are the, you know, these are the modern versions of the food fighters. And he has a, a very big collection of the grocery gangs and they're cool. I mean, it's essentially the same kind of shit. Um, but yeah. How many of you guys remember all these amazing Mattel franchises? These short-lived, the mad scientists, food fighters, and the Boglins. Let's talk about them in the comments. Let's talk about them on the live shows. You know what I'm saying? We got a Discord going as well. The Discord servers. It's uh, Mystic Knights of the LBP. You can go over there. And I talk almost nightly to some people who talk back. Um, on the discords talk about 80s talk about my movies talk about horror all that good stuff but yeah let's let's get an interaction going about all these dope 80s oddities and that's it Mattel sadly Mattel Mattel is not uh, you know Mattel is not in the 80s anymore so they're not taking as as, as many odd risks uh, but they are Bringing back Masters of the Universe, and I will forever be grateful to them for doing that. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's it, man. That's that fun size episode, Mattel Oddities, that I loved growing up in the 80s. And hopefully you loved them too, and if not, you just saw some weird ass shit, and maybe you want to get them now too. So if you got a line on some Food Fighters, let me know. If you got a line on... uh, that Halloween Boglin that looks like a pumpkin. That's not going to be $285. <laughs> Little seavage, no. But uh, that's it. Until next time when we're swimming in an erotic cave, in erotic water, through a citrus mountain. Equip from the 80s. Subscribe, like, share. Goodbye. Mm-hmm.